or is it this one of these guys? Oh yeah. Okay, so we do have the structural intake that I would like, and we have the adapter long that I want. So we do have. We have we can actually make something, can make something that uh, lands in water. Pretty sure I do. So let's say we grab this cockpit and let's say we grab this thing. So how much fuel is that? That is 200. How much does that compare to say this thing? Uh, that has uh, less. That has less than that. Okay, so we can probably make an SSTO out of this alone. Okay, so what we're going to do is that. We will throw an aerospike engine on here. Not That's not an aerospike, that's a rapier engine. Do I need to test an aerospike engine somewhere? Isn't that one of my contracts? Uh, rapier. This. Apparently I'm splashed down right now. Doing it. Can I close these? I can. Good. The thought. Oh yeah, test that on escape trajectory. That'll be easy to be done. Doing that one. Aerospike in flight. Okay. Hmm. I want to do an aerospike in flight that I might as well not use on rapier engine. I might as well use I might as well use a jet engine and a couple other extra tanks. So hmm. and say use a pair of these guys. That means like no cargo bay. Or maybe I just want to bring a whole bunch of people into Kerbin orbit. <laughs> I could do that. I could just make this a cruise ship. So this holds four people. that. Now I have a nice solid place to put these guys. And we could do our arrow spike there. Oh, but that's right. This, this whole thing is not a really good altitude for an SSTO flight path. So it makes more sense to do this on a test bed and to actually have this be a real ship so let's do let's do a small ssto that can get people into orbit how can i get a plane into space well i you get a plane into space by flying in the uh planes have an advantage in that they can use air breathing engines and the uh, ISP, or the efficiency of a rocket, is basically detailed in the ISP. So this Aerospike engine has an engine ISP of 388 uh, atmospheric or 390 vacuum. A turbojet engine has an ISP of 800 ASL and 1200 uh, vacuum. The vacuum makes no sense as an air-breathing engine. So we have an 800 ISP compared to a 390, which is way better. So they're much, much more fuel efficient. So if you can use the air atmosphere, the air breathing engines for as much of your flight as possible, you can get a lot farther with a lot less fuel. So you build, and then at some point you run out of air, and then you have to switch over to a non-air breathing engine or a straight up rocket engine. Uh, which, like the air, the Aerospike is one, it's one of those, and it's actually one of my favorites to use for space planes because it has a fairly efficient um, rocket. Or it's fairly efficient as far as rockets go. And it's very light for how much thrust it puts out. So it's a good thrust to weight ratio and it's a good efficiency. 
So and those are good things to have for a space plane. The Aeros, the rapier engine is specifically designed to go from at from um, air breathing to uh, liquid oxidizer uh, in a single engine. So you can just stick one of these on your plane, and then you're already done. You got both the engines you'll need. So you just have to bring enough fuel, uh, assuming you have enough thrust and some wing surfaces, and you're SSTOing. The rapier makes this whole whole deal pretty easy. So if the yeah, let's just let's design this plane as a crew transfer plane. So I'll have they'll have the, this cockpit of this. Apparently, this can carry four crew, which is really really nice. It's a very compact way to carry four crew. So if we can get this up into orbit, then we can say build the space station refueling station and build that in orbit. Oh, and I do have the clampatron. So space plane plus includes a uh, inline docking adapter which i apparently cannot open right now because you, know, you can kind of see it when it's transparent but this is actually a docking port so we'll have that um maybe we want uh, two engines instead of that one in which case we do not use that we would use this because we have this now And we need to bring some extra fuel. Which this should certainly be enough. What does our center of mass look like? It doesn't look too bad. Uh, yeah, you've heard correctly, Mysterio. Space Plane Plus is future stock which is why I'm actually using it in my stream right now. I normally don't use too many mods for my parts. You apparently just saw him do the command for the mods I have. So, and they normally kind of unbalance the game, but considering these parts are future stock, I'm going to be okay with that. I'm actually going to, I'll use these. And they do add some nice things, like the dense, like the much more fuel density for these parts than the otherwise other normal space plane parts. Um, would that be enough fuel? I guess we'll test it and find out. We need we still we, we need our wings and we'll need our RCS. So wings now. Alright, I can explain well most of the new space plane parts are parts that uh let's see, this let's take these off because those are all mod parts. Uh, we have had this uh, fuel tank as stock for a very long time. And until now, very few parts have really uh, worked with it. We have you know, basically this adapter, that tank. So you could put another adapter on the back. And, you know, uh, this, this is the cockpit everyone used for space planes. So uh, the person who made this mod decided that they should be more parts that really kind of work with this shape tank. Hello, cool dude. We are we are talking space planes plus. So that's essentially what the mod that what the mods are is all parts that uh, various parts that can work with the sh same body shape and add functionality. So we have uh, a sh a tank that this shape that has liquid fuel and oxidizer instead of just liquid fuel. We have a part that is a crew capsule. So this will actually hold four crew into it for transferring. We have an inline docking port. This thing kind of opens up to, to, have, to have docking. And um, one of the things that most people are really happy to see is cargo bays. So you can have planes that have built-in cargo bays, even though we don't even have them on rockets yet. Uh, the plane I am making right now is a single stage to orbit crew transfer plane. That's what we're going to do first. Uh, we can throw some science on here, no problem. Um, but its primary purpose for this plane is going to be to get crew to and from stumps, either stations or ships that I have assembled in orbit. Uh, we will be getting a couple contracts done with this. I mean, you can always do science in orbit just because you can do a crew report with whatever cockpit you have. But we will be doing our 
engine test for the rapier, which is like that. And I think we can get something else. Those are two splash down things. I guess we'll just be testing the rapier engine and then building an SSTO because we can. Oh yeah, recover aside from a run curve. Yeah, so we can do that by doing a crew report or something. Or we can just stick on... Uh, oh, actually, we do throw a barometer on here just so we can get that all flying at. We can throw. We can just throw a thermometer on here, just so we can do that. We can get some because it doesn't hurt. Um, let's see. Make a long plane that can carry a hundred crew. That would be awesome. Uh, not in this career. Again, Iron Man with a whole note like you know Kerbal staying dead. I'd hate to like kill a hundred Kerbals and then have to make burial sites for all of them or something. So I could. Maybe do that something, but like this is this is not the career for that kind of thing. Um, do you usually use reaver flight? Do you mean the rapier engines? Uh, or just do I reverting flights after I crashed and blown people up? I mean, like in my sandbox, I'll revert flights all the time just because it's, I'm just there's it's just sandbox. I'm just kind of messing around with stuff anyway. But what, uh, going back to the parts that are introduced because of Space Planes Plus is they have a lot of more wing parts. So instead of, you know, we've had um, rectangular wing pieces and delta wing pieces, but now we have rectangular pieces that can go on via their end. We have smaller delta wings. We have thin delta wings that can be attached on either end. So there is there is a lot of stuff. There's a lot of new wing things to give us a lot, to give us more freedom with how we make the shapes of our wings. So, what kind of wings do I want this to have? Do I want more fuel? I kind of want more fuel. I think I'll just put two of these guys on here, and I'll br I'll empty these of most of their oxidizer, and that way that'll be the air breathing jet fuel. And we'll have to fuel line that into the center, which is this tab. Now we're gonna. The only downside of having so many wing things is you're almost spoiled for choice. It's like, exactly how do I want to make these, this shape again? I don't... What shape am I making? Don't even know. I've already unlocked, like, basically all the wing parts, too. Uh, no, we then. If they're dead, they're dead. I mean, it's permadeath. That's what permadeath means. I I will not I do not to like um if someone dies then like the muting is only for a day. So eventually like I mean you won't be muted forever. But the idea is that um you'll be muted for a day. So it's not like you're being banned from the stream, you're just won't be talking for the rest of that day. Assume that good. Eh. Hmm. 
All right, so that's a wing. I don't want it to be flat. Oh yes, and I can stick these uh, air intakes on here now. They're the good ones. Actually, maybe before I stick them on, even I should add some more part. Uh, some uh, we can add the interchange coolers. Stick that on there. Put that on there. That's there's some air intake for you. And I think I can stick these on the back, and they still work for some reason. I can test that with this, I suppose. We can test to see if that actually produces error somehow. We'll have to move our fuel line, though. That's kind of weird. It's not really looking on there as straight as I would hope. That should be better. I like that they give us that the <laughs> like they even give us uh, wing surfaces or um, ailerons that actually meet up like this. So even the control surfaces are so much better. Okay, so there our center of mass is good. Our center of lift is where now? Right there. That's not too bad. In fact, it's as good enough where I will consider putting on some uh, canards, and it will be out of place. And actually, sometimes I've been trying to reduce the number of canards I use on my planes, just because it seems like everything needs them, and I'd rather things not need them. But uh, I'll go ahead and use some canards on this. They seem appropriate. Very Learjet. Okay, so as fuel burns, the center of mass will actually shift forward, making the plane more stable as it flies. Uh, we have room for more air intakes, so let's, uh, let's uh, throw some of these guys on here. That doesn't look too bad. And that's right, I wanted to make this... Was I going to try to make this water landing? Was that a thing I was going to really do? I suppose I could try that. I could put ladders. I have ladders now. 
Where is it? Ladders. Ladders are the utility. I found while testing that if you tilt the ladder, so see how kind of if you tilt it too far, it'll stick out the bottom. If you tilt it one before that, this is angled properly so that they'll transition from the ladder to the sides of the plane just fine. That had to be done through experimentation. And let's see, so we got that. The next thing is uh, we have modern propellant, don't we? Wait, so there's 15 there. 150? Holy crap, that's a lot of modern propellant. We do not need that much modern propellant. So let's get rid of some of that, control our weight some. Does this have any modern propellant? Man, okay. So, um, but we do want some RCS thrusters. Oh, actually, we want some SAS2. I think I'll put them in line here. That would be a good place for them. Let's get back on. Ugh. Oh, oh, that's going backward. No. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, no. I, is that going, at, is that doing it the right, no, it's, that's upside down and backward. Why are you being upside down and backward? There, thank you. And let's put on some SAS. No, no, actually, no, we have SAS. We need what we need is modern propellant thrusters. So we can just put them all around here. And that should be good. So there are front and back, side to side. And down, front and back. This is not exactly on top. That. Yep, those lined up pretty good. Front and back. I I have made a bunch of weird planes. I can show you see if the the way you guys are talking, I almost kind of want to load up my demolition site and show you some of the weirder stuff outside of the career. This is going to be a useful plane for the career. So we have our we have our RCS, we have our dock port, we have our crew cab. Uh we have air intakes. We could probably go with more. I Right, I, would ask, I do want to try to make this a water landing plane. Do I have the parts necessary? Ah, uh, kind of. I am missing the one part I'd prefer to use. Let's give this a try anyway. Oh, we're, we'll throw the wheels on here. So really, when it comes to make something that's... What do you mean, no audio? You mean no build music? Yeah, the music is basically turned off.
Uh, so yeah, when you basically want something that that lands on water, it basically adds a whole bunch. Just need to add a whole bunch of air intakes to the bottom of it, and that'll pretty much do. So, in order to make this so it can land in water, I have a standoff piece of structure. I normally like to use a different piece of structure, but this is kind of all I have right now, I guess. I don't have all the structure pieces necessary to do it the way I would like to do it. I have the music turned off because um, my audio card has an error in it where any the background sounds kind of bleed into the microphone and it just kind of echoes really bad. So I've just been turning the audio off. Okay, so that's kind of weird looking, but that is actually effective. That is that is a floaty. So if we copy this and we put some more on the plane, we'll have a plane that floats in water. Um, whether or not that can take back off again, I'm not sure. Let's let's try just a little bit more. No, well, not the whole thing. I wanted the whole thing to stay where it was. If well, yes, you can coat the entire bottom of it, but I'd rather not use that many. And also, the idea of the stand is that these. Uh, structural pieces can withstand impacts with the water up to 100 meters per second. Wings cannot. So I want to keep as much of the plane as far away from the water as possible because not only do I want to land in the water, I want to be able to take back off again. And part of being able to take off is having parts that are not broken, as well as uh, making the parts... Uh, you want to have a little bit your nose to be up a little bit, so you want the bottom, to, the the back of the plane to sink a little bit farther into the water than the front. Wow, that looks really bad. Okay, right, that. Okay, so okay, this looks weird. This looks really weird, but it might work. So I want to give it a try. <laughs> um, action groups. I should set up some action groups. Now six. Six will switch modes for the rapiers. Uh, seven will uh, activate, deactivate our intakes. Um, actually, we'll have these ones on a different one because I may shut them down earlier if they end up doing nothing. Um, these are technically still all working air intakes. I'm going to have to shut these off, too. This is actually going to be a fair amount of drag. I hope that the uh, drag all cantilevered out at the bottom like this thing. Uh, you can't find my stream. Oh, you can't find it on your laptop? That's interesting. I do not know why you cannot do that. You should blame Twitch. Okay, so that's uh, that's all that. Do I should put some lights on this thing. Um, toggle. Why not? Um... I should get some lights on this thing. And solar panels. This thing needs solar panels. It'll be in space. It should have solar panels. We will use the nice closed looking ones. Like that. Okay, so that's solar panels covered. Let's set the action for that. And 
and bytes. Well, that's interesting that it uh, wants to do symmetry like that. Hmm. So we get some lights there, which should light up all that. And All right, hopefully that'll be enough light to light up everything I want it to. Unfortunately, the passengers are not going to be getting the best view all the time because they kind of have some air intakes in the way. So I guess this is going to be the best seat in the house. I would say this would be a pretty good seat to have, except there seems to be a crack in the window. So maybe you don't want to sit exactly there. All right, so we have lights. We should set an action group for them. Our lights. And actually, let's give them a bit of a tint. Let's give them a bit of a green, those ones a bit of a green tint. These ones a bit of a red tint. And we will have to see. if this works because if this if this whole thing does uh work pretty good that actually makes this plane safer because we could then land in water so if we have some kind of problem where we can't land back at the KSC or even land on land we can actually ditch it we can land in the water and so the entire planet is our runway oh it is dark oh and both bill and jebediah are apparently on this test i guess that is uh that is destiny. Okay, so it is now la, now daytime. We will turn on our lights. There's two things I need to test to splash down. I'll, I'll, I'll see if this plane works and we'll do splash down testing. So we activate our engines. Wait for the thrust to push us away from the brakes, okay. Airborne. Okay, we are airborne. Let's do a little bit of maneuvering testing. This plane maneuvers quite good, looks like. And still quite stable. Right, so let's fly out to sea and then land into the water. I do know that uh, for a water landing, you do have to be going less than 100 meters per second. Any structural piece you have connecting anything to anything uh, will break at 100 meters per second in water. If you can get enough uh, air intakes stacked up so that your nothing is touching the water except air intakes, then then you can go a bit faster, I suppose. But that uh, we will kind of assume we will be always have some kind of structure in the water, just so that we can also have landing gear to get off the runway. And let's turn on our lights to see what they look like. Yeah, that lights up good. And we have Splashdown. And so far, nothing is actually touching the water or breaking. Alright, looks like we have success.
Uh, that wasn't too difficult to land in the water. All right, now we have to see if it'll uh, ex uh, actually SSTO before we can actually call it a floating SSTO. Because the floating part is down. Got it. And yeah, it periodically does that as long as you're moving. Okay, so let's uh, let's activate these things so we can monitor how much airflow they actually have. Yeah, the one facing forward already has uh, more airflow than the one facing backward. Let's see what that is like once we're in orbit. Or actually, let's see if we can get out of the water without breaking our engine first. And we can. Yeah, we can. Okay, we can get out of the water without breaking the engine. That's important. And now it's time to go to orbit. Okay, so the forward-facing air intake, uh, it is getting more and more air as we go faster. Oh, no, that is going down. Okay, so it's the back one is getting air. It is getting uh, less air than the one facing forward, but it is getting air. And the drag is zero? Really? How can the drag be zero? can't possibly be right. Is that some kind of bug I just found, that if you put your air takes backwards, you still get air, but you get zero drag? Because that's an awesome, <laughs> if that's true. That is really easy to, ma to manipulate and make things awesome. Let's turn the lights on. Lights, please. Thank you. Oh, we did lose something. We actually lost a, cup arc, a, cup, a pair of control surfaces. Okay, so we didn't make it entirely unscathed out of the water. We did lose some uh, some control surfaces. I guess we need to float a little bit higher in the water. I'll have to rearrange them so that's so they actually get in better. But uh, relatively minor loss. We seem to be still very controllable. So we will continue upward and onward into our SSTO test to make sure we have like enough fuel and everything. Cause that's kind of one thing I'm concerned about. I don't, I don't know if we have enough fuel. 